Hey everybody, this is Jacob uh, from PPC Hero slash Hannapin Marketing, and I'm here to talk to you about scripts. There's, this is going to be a little different than what you usually see. This is going to be probably a script I haven't seen other people posting, and it's also one I'm going to try and go into some explanation and some reasoning behind, you know, why is the code like it is? Because there's a lot of stuff out there. They give you, they tell you, oh, scripts are so cool, and they don't give you any code, or they give you some code, and, uh, pretty much to a newbie it just looks like magic and you're not sure and that's probably one of the biggest the biggest hurdles in getting into coding is um, how do I start reading this I mean it is a computer language but you can kinda of think of it as a language like English or French it's really hard to understand unless you start from the basics and you kinda of start putting things together you know put it this way that I, I couldn't write a novel in French unless I had already you know had an ability to kinda of comprehend French so saying that we're gonna jump in here and the first thing you're going to see is this function main. Uh, all AdWords scripts have a function main. And then the next part right here that you can see this comment line, this is a function that I actually got from the Google Scripts team that they had posted. And what this does is it just converts the JavaScript native date format, which AdWords doesn't accept, and puts it into the year month date format, which AdWords does accept. And then, you know, get data from past, number of days, and you'll see this used right here on these two variables. The day previous, which is yesterday, is one day in the past, so day previous will always be yesterday, and previous previous will be two days in the past, which will be the day before yesterday. And the reason I'm doing those instead of today and yesterday is I always want to compare two full days against each other. It's going to be really kind of weird and unreliable if I have an alert that tells me how a half day compared to a full day. So the next thing we're going to have to do is think, well, where are these stats going to come from? And one place I can pull them is from my campaigns. So I built this campaign iterator, AdWords app, which you have to use. Then I select my campaigns with conditions, impressions greater than zero, and yesterday. There's a few other options there. You could put status is enabled or something like that. But I hope you get the point there and then we will go to get and that pulls them all and you can just think of this as this variable campaigns iterator holds just a bucket of all the campaigns in my account now I need two places to hold the the actual cost and that is yesterday cost and day before yesterday cost and those are both set to zero because we don't have anything in them just think of that as empty but I need them there so the code knows where to put the numbers later so now we're going to jump down to this. This is says while campaign iterators has next, while there's still something in that bucket, I want this code in between these brackets to run. So this stuff in here. And what this does is each time there's something in the bucket, it takes the campaign. So one item from the bucket, it takes the stats, gets the stats from day previous, so yesterday, and gets the stats from yesterday's yesterday for stats two. And then I add up the costs. So yesterday, I take the costs and what this plus equals is without getting into the details is think of it as a running total. Out here we have these two things, yesterday and yesterday, yesterday's cost. So we have them set to zero. And each time this runs, it's going to dump a value into, into both of these. And what the plus equals does is if I just have equals, every time something comes up, it'll be reassigned. This says I want to take the previous total and add it to the new total. So I want to take all the campaigns that have run before and add the next campaign's cost to it. And that will give you an account-wide total. And then next, after I get those, I have everything is run. There's nothing left in this bucket. You don't have to say anything. That's what the while does. It always checks while. And as long as there's tr it's true and there's something next, it keeps running. So next, after that's done, we go down here and... What I'm really interested in is, is to see if my cost has increased by 20% or more in the last day. So I take, I have a small typo there, cost. If yesterday's cost is greater than or equal to the day before yesterday's cost by 1.20, basically 20%, then I want to send an email and this is another thing you can just kind of find in the reference material. It's always going to take the same format. You have to have a recipient, a subject, and a body. And for the recipient, you put your email. For the subject, 
you put the subject, the cost alert, this one, and the body, your account has received a 20% increase in cost. And then mailapp.sendemail takes those two values, puts them together, and then runs the app and will send you an email if this happens. So if you go over 120. There's also other things you can do. I mean, this is not super advanced, but it takes a little, a little knowledge to do. You can put the two bars there and have or, and I could switch it. So if yesterday cost is less than or equal to day before. It's always the worst to type when someone's watching you. Yesterday cost. Yesterday cost. And then since we're going in the other direction, we're going to go for 0 0.80. And run at that. And then that checks and says if yesterday's cost is greater than or equal to a 120% or is less than 80% of the cost, then we, you know, you might be worried that there is a decrease in cost that quickly, of course, you know, you might want to manipulate these based on your account and each account is different. You know, sometimes they have very slow weekends. Sometimes, you know, they're evenly paced throughout the week. And then down here, I just included another one and this just kind of tells you that it run. Yeah, it's the same thing if you look if if this happens, if these cost variables, one of them is true, it sends the email. If not, it sends the email and tells me everything was good, you know, carry on. And this can be easily replicated. I mean, some of the ones that we use in the day to day are a little more, more complicated. If you don't want cost, you can just look at the mater material, help materials, it's pretty simple. Go for get clicks, get impressions. And it's really as easy as that. It's just probably a lot to take in at once, but it's just something easy. You know, you won't break your account by doing this. And it'll throw back errors. The editor, you know, it kind of color codes things when they're working or not working. And if a little playing around, you can probably build something pretty cool. And you don't even have to build it all by yourself. You can kind of look through the material other people have posted and select bits and pieces and kind of hack something together yourself from the pieces and make it work. So I hope that helps. And I mean, if you enjoyed this, go ahead and leave a comment or something, and you can see if this kind of little experiment worked and how people like this. So take care, and I will talk to you next time.